In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Friends, it's lovely to be with you virtually uh, once again in our act of worship today for the great feast of the uh, Epiphany. There's a lovely prayer in common worship uh, used at the Eucharist for this day uh, in which these words are said. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. And so let's hold those words in our hearts now as we prepare ourselves for this worship. Let us raise our hearts to the Lord and let us ask God to forgive us for those times when we have failed him in word or in deed. Let us confess our sins. God be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May your ways be made known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the leading of a star manifested your Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, we're going to continue now with our first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Reading from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephra, all those from Sheba shall come.
Matthew tells of the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thanks be to God. Hello, it's really good to join you, my fellow Mothers' Union members, for this special Epiphany service. If I were any good as a preacher, I'd be whipping off this cassock, I'd be standing on this table, I'd be putting on a sequined catsuit, and I'd do you a song and dance routine. I'd be giving it some good dancing moves. And the song I'd sing would be this. If you've got it, flaunt it. Step right up and strut your stuff. If you've got it, flaunt it. That's why I'd sing to you. Why that particular song? Because today we're keeping the feast of Epiphany. Now the word Epiphany means showing forth or showing off, but I think a much better translation is flaunt it. At Epiphany, Jesus flaunts it. Now what do I mean by that? Well, we've already celebrated Christmas. We've given thanks for the birth of Jesus, but that was a quiet birth, almost secretive. It happened at the dead of night. In an, around the back of an inn, in a town that almost nobody could even remember about, so insignificant was it in those days. This was a really quiet, humble birth. The only people who really knew about it were Mary and Joseph and a few scruffy shepherds in the hills. Well, at Epiphany, a few days later, Jesus flaunts it. That's what we're celebrating. Jesus reveals his glory as God. He shows who he is as God in our midst. And the people who first receive this flaunting are the wise men. Now, normally at an Epiphany ser service, uh, the preacher would go on to talk about the wise men's gifts because it's through those gifts that Jesus reveals his identity. The gold showing him to be a king. The frankincense showing him to be God, the one who's worthy of our worship. The myrrh, the symbol of death, pointing us ahead to the cross. But I want us to think a little bit more about those wise men themselves. Less about the gifts, more about the magi. These strange figures, about whom we know so little, travelled many miles, hundreds of miles, perhaps from as far as modern-day Iraq, right across the ancient Near East, on this journey following a star. As they made that long journey, what were they expecting? What did they hope to see when they arrived at the end of their journey? 
and often wonder if when they arrived in Bethlehem and the star finally settled over the home of Mary and Joseph and they saw the child, what was their reaction? Is that it? Have we come all this way just to look at some kid? I wonder if there was a degree of disappointment. But of course we know from the scriptures that there wasn't. Whatever they were seeking, they found it. We read in Matthew's Gospel that the wise men went back by another way. Now that word way is the word used to describe Christians in the early years of the church. They were followers of the way. So as the wise men went back another way, it means they went back changed. They went back converted. Jesus, even as a small child, perhaps just two years old when this happened, had changed their lives. How? What had happened in that encounter that these men should be so changed? Well, we don't really know that. The Bible doesn't enable us to enter into the minds of the Magi, but I don't think it's hard to imagine. As they went into the home in Bethlehem, they saw three things, three things that left them changed. The first thing they saw was simply enough, a family, an ordinary human family. Mary, the mother, Joseph, the stepfather, the child Jesus, perhaps in Mary's arms. God had come to live in an ordinary family. That's the extraordinary truth. In Philippians, we read that in, God, in Jesus, God humbled himself to take upon himself the form of a servant. God in Jesus has come to share our life. So inevitably, he was brought up within a family. It's a sign, it's proof to us of his humanity, that this was a real child. But in so doing, because God has come to live in a normal family, family life is made sacred. Now that's something that's very important for us as members of the Mother's Union, because the heart of our objects is supporting and upholding family life. We know that family life is precious and sacred. This has been a really tough year for families with coronavirus. The pressure of home educating children for so many months earlier in the year. Then schools having to uh, shut their doors so often to bubbles of children because of the, of the virus. Other families have struggled to make ends meet. Many have become food bank dependent. Many find that their wage, the incomes are unreliable now because the job market has become so unpredictable. It's tough days for family life. And that means that as Mother's Union members, this epiphany at the start of a new year, we must commit ourselves anew to doing all we can to uphold family life. We can do that through our prayers as we pray for families, especially the families we know. But there's so many practical ways we can support family life as well. Helping out the families we know, giving money to charity, helping out with food banks and so on. Family life is going through tough times, but we know through the wise men's visit that family life is sacred. So let's commit ourselves again to upholding it. So they see a family. Then the second thing the wise men see is a face. They gaze upon the face of a child. No ordinary face. This is the face of God himself. In the book of Numbers, when Aaron blesses the people, he prays that God might uncover his face to us. That's exactly what happens as, as Jesus is born. God uncovers his face to us. It's a really potent image, isn't it, when we're all wearing face masks. You can barely see who people are. It's as if God removes the face covering. And in the face of Jesus, we gaze upon the face of God. The wise men see God in this child. They offer him their lives and they're changed. And at Epiphany, at the start of a new year, you and I are challenged to do exactly the same, to gaze upon the face of God in Jesus and to offer him our lives. We may not have gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, but we can offer our hearts, our bodies, our whole lives to the child Jesus. And of course we do that above all in our worship. And worship and prayer is again central to us as Mother's Union members. It's been tough times also for worship, with churches open and shut during the past year, some people nervous of gathering with others in worship. But as Mother's Union members, it's vital that we place worship first. 
If we're not already back at our churches, then as soon as we can, we need to be back there. Otherwise, until then, we need to be finding other ways to unite ourselves with the worship of the church, perhaps online or through our private prayer. In worship, we offer our lives to God and God can do his work in us. In worship, we gaze upon the face of God in Jesus and are changed. A family, a face. And the third thing the wise men see as they enter into that home is a future. They see their future. The family shows that Jesus is human. The face shows that Jesus is divine. In Jesus, humanity and divinity meet perfectly and are one. And as that happens, the ancient rift between God and the human race, caused by our sin, is healed. Jesus, in his own being, reunites Godhead and humanity, work that begins at his birth, but which reaches its culmination when he gives his life for us upon the cross. So just as God in Jesus comes to share our human life, so we can share his divine life, because we are reconciled with God through what he's done for us. So in the child Jesus, we see our future, we know that our future is not something to fear, it is something to look forward to. Our future is the glory of the new Jerusalem, where Jesus has gone ahead to prepare a place for us. And in this anxious, stressful year, when we've been so worried about so many things, we need to hold on to the sure hope of that future. Jesus has been born for us. Jesus has died for us. He will never let us go. Our future is safe in him. The wise men see a family because Jesus is human. They see a face because he's divine. And so they see their future, which is bound up in God. I remember some years ago leading a children's uh, nativity service and we gave out to every member of the congregation a crown. And they had to put this crown on and we gathered around the crib that to pretend they were wise men. Now, sadly, through the uh, medium of the internet, I can't give you a crown, much as I'd love to do so. But this epiphany, imagine you are one of those wise men, one of the Magi. Imagine that you have been to visit the Holy Family, that you're gazing upon the child Jesus held in the arms of his mother. You've arrived at the house to which the star points, and that star points to the light of the world, to Jesus himself a human family, a divine face, your own future. Amen. As we offer our prayers, we offer gold, frankincense and myrrh, ancient gifts of mystic meaning offered to Jesus. We offer gold, gold which spoke of kingship, we worship you, Jesus, our King, for you are the King of love. As gold in the furnace is tried and purified in the fire, so purify our hearts and minds. Fill us afresh with your love, that we may live always as citizens of your kingdom and serve with joyful hearts. Bless with your wisdom all earthly rulers, all who govern and lead in the nations of this world. And may all earthly kingdoms reflect the values of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer frankincense, incense proclaiming your divinity, Lord incense proclaiming that you, the God of life and love, are present in our midst, present in our lives, and present in your world, present in word and sacrament. May we and all people be ever more aware of your presence, of your love, of your healing, and of your power to save. As our prayer rises up in your presence as incense, so may we be presented before you 
with penitent, faithful and obedient hearts and ready to proclaim your presence through lives of joyful service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer myrrh, its bitter perfume pointing to a life offered up. Your life, Lord, offered up for your people. A life offered for a bruised humanity and for a world broken by sin and division, by greed and power, by poverty and hatred. A life offered to speak not of wrath but of love, of love which brings healing and peace, and a risen life offering the hope and promise of resurrection glory. Anoint us afresh with your Holy Spirit, that we may be agents of your healing love, and that we may be strengthened to live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as you receive the gifts of wise men, accept the gifts we bring, the offering of our hearts and our lives, all that we are and all that we can be. Amen. I invite you to join me in praying the Mother's Union prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for your love so freely given to us all. We pray for families around the world. We bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your Spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and, in love and service, reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we conclude our prayers in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
that like myself, many of you will have been happy to say goodbye to 2020. A year which has brought so much sadness to so many. A year in which our members were getting ready to build with hope and confidence. But before we could get started, the foundations were shaken and hope and confidence cancelled. However, our Mother's Union members sprang into action, making masks, hearts, prayer squares, scrubs and scrub bags and filled emergency hospital bags. There were many, though, who said, but I can't do anything and were reminded that they had the most important job of all, to pray. Prayer is central to all we do and something we can do at any time of day, whenever and wherever we are. I was delighted to find that many of you have become Zoomers or if not have managed to keep in touch in many other ways. Your initiative knows no bounds. So here we are in the season of Epiphany, a season of revelation. So what will be revealed to us? Our theme for 2021 is rebuilding hope and confidence. And my feeling at present is that as the year progresses, there will be a lot to rebuild. Many lives have been changed, some for the better, some not. And it is these lives that we need to focus on. How can we help? How can we make a difference? I can hear some of you shouting, but we're too old. But actually, I know quite a number of 80 to 90 year olds who will keep trying their hand at anything and everything. Think Captain Tom. But again, if you can't, don't worry. Just pray for those who can. So back to how can we help? We can look around at our communities in this changed world. Many young mums have given birth this last year without the help of antenatal classes and some with no close family. No one to support them, but you, our members, have a wealth of information and experience to give. There is still work needed for hospitals, etc. But, and this is the crucial one, we should maybe start to think of ways to encourage these younger mums to look at what we do, what we stand for. Encourage them to look at our worldwide organisation and take part in our projects. Introduce them to 16 Days of Activism, our work to eradicate modern day slavery and tell them the Mary Sumner story. I was recently given a copy of The Sea from 1979 the front page picture was of our caravan, but inside is an article relating to the Diocesan Board of Responsibility, asking the Mother's Union for help. As the work of Christian care in the community could not be carried out solely by a few professionals. Help was needed with children from divorced families and also to educate children about the dangers of alcohol something that Mary Sumner herself talked about in the 1870s, but these things are also still relevant today. I have a daughter who works in the early years sector, and during the pandemic, the children have taken backward steps. Many are back in nappies, and some have forgotten how to use a knife and fork. I can only ask, why and what can we do to help these young parents? How do we reach out to them? Food for thought. With a knife and fork, of course. And so I ask you all to join me in praying for guidance and support for the year ahead. And I repeat, if you can't do anything yourself, you can certainly pray for us. No excuses. What does Mother's Union mean to me? When asked this question, I thought of three words, faith, fun and fellowship. Faith, because this is the basis of all that we do, whether in our branches, diocese or worldwide. Without God being at the centre, we cannot fulfil the full potential that he releases within the Mother's Union. Fun, because we have to show this to attract others to look at what we do and why. No one wants to take a look at something that seems dull. Fellowship, 
This is very important, particularly to older members in our branches. But it goes, goes much wider than this. I have had the privilege of meeting and getting to know many fellow members, not only from this country, but also from around the world. Meeting these friends at special occasions, such as a general meeting or special services, is a real joy and it is just as if we had met last month. This is why I often use those three words on our programmes, so we can keep them in mind. I have been a member for almost 50 years now, and I could never have envisaged what being a member would mean to me or where it would lead me. But I believe God has been with me every step of the way, as he does with each one of us, if we will just put our hand in his. What has this last 10 months taught me in lockdown? In mid-March, we all looked ahead to the future with trepidation. Fear of what the future held. Not being able to see family or friends. How are we going to get shopping, etc. Then lockdown started and we all got on with life. Being not only a member of the Mothers' Union, but our branch leader, my mind went into overdrive. How, when we are not meeting, can we keep the usual camaraderie, fellowship and prayer life of our branch going? The cogs started turning, and soon we were using regular telephone calls, delivery of news sheets, both church and branch. Some of us were starting to get more adept at technology, so that who would have thought 12 months ago that Zoom meetings would have been the norm? Some of my members were recruited to knit some cross squares from the Mother's Union website to send out to members and congregations our wider congregation, with a, a verse to remind them that no one is ever alone. Later on, we sent homemade pocket hugs too, all of which were very much appreciated. During all this time, we have continued to supply Chorley and I believe some of Preston Hospital with emergency toiletry bags. By the end of the year, due to the phenomenal support from our branch, from the deanery, from local community and my, our local congregation, we will have managed to supply just short of 2,000 bags within the year. All this would not be possible without the, the Mother's Union members using their various God-given talents and gifts for the benefit of others. So today... Like the star that led the wise men to present their gifts to the infant Jesus, so God has been galvanizing us as to use as part of his family to, to use the gifts that we have for the benefit of his people and to remind us that none of us are ever alone. We can all get visits of some sort, either by personal doorstep, socially distanced visits, by phone, letter, or even technology. We are all showing Christian love and compassion for our neighbour. So, the lessons I have learnt through the pandemic have been that we can all show Christian care and love, not just for our own families, but for our wider worldwide families in many different ways, even if we can only sit at home and pray.
of Bethlehem by John Johansson Burns. The sky is deep velvet black, yet myriad points of scattered light, and one sparkles brighter than all, the resplendent star of Bethlehem. This is the light that guided three travellers from the east, journeying towards the great sea until the star stopped hovering above the village. What is this that would guide three men of wisdom on a spiritual quest? What but the hand of God drawing them by his created star? The star was simply a sign of a brighter burning light. The birth of a child was the beginning of light for a darkened world. Shine on then, star of Bethlehem, for we too live in deep darkness. Lead us, spiritual thirsting seekers, to find the light in Jesus, Prince of Peace. My friends, as we now come to the close of our worship, let us end praying together for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Brothers and sisters, may God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light of light, lead you in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light in the kingdom of his beloved Son. Amen. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with his joy and peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.